Let me say it again. Good morning, church. <laughs> You're here. All right. Good to see everybody this morning. The Lord has given us a magnificent day outside, hasn't he? Well, we're glad you're here, and if you're uh, here this morning for the first time, welcome. We, we hope that uh, as we worship together today, you will really sense the Lord's presence, and the Lord will speak to you. As we begin our service, I want to read to you Psalm 150. It's a wonderful psalm, and, and it's, it's amazing if you're familiar, there's 150 psalms. And this last psalm just kind of becomes the capper on the whole thing. This is what it says. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heavens. Praise him for his acts of power. Praise him for his surpassing greatness. Praise him with the sounding of the trumpet. Praise him with the harp and the lyre. Praise him with tambourine and dancing. Praise him with the strings and flute. Praise him with the clash of cymbals. Praise him with resounding cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's stand and pray. Father, as we come in this place today, we come now to lift our hearts and our voices and our minds and our very souls to you this morning in praise. You are holy, you are mighty, you are loving, you are just, and Lord, your mercy endures forever. As we come to this place today, allow us to express our praise and our thankfulness to you. And may our words, our thoughts, our music, our prayers, the ministry of the word, as Jody comes to you today, let all of it lift up the name of Jesus Christ and all of God's people said, amen. amen. Well, let's stay standing as we come and we begin singing this morning.
Good morning, I'm Rich Kauser, one of the elders, and my wife Penny Kauser, and we're going to do the responsive reading this morning. So Penny will lead off, and I will lead the rest of you. <laughs> we, give thanks, we give you thanks, O Lord, with all of our heart. Before others, I will sing your praise. We will bow down toward your holy temple and give thanks to your name for your steadfast love and faithfulness. For you have lifted up your name and your word above all things. Amen. And you strengthen our souls. All the rulers of the earth shall praise you, O Lord, for they have heard the words of your mouth. And they shall sing of the ways of the Lord, for great is the glory of the Lord. For the Lord is high and lifted up, but regards those who are lowly. Though we walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve your life and stretch your hand against our enemies, and your right hand delivers us. O Lord, fulfill your purpose for me. Lord, your steadfast love for me endure. God bless the reading of his word to our hearts. It's good to see you all this morning, and uh, well, the Lord has given us a beautiful day outside. And I uh, want to just highlight a few things for you that are coming up. And uh, But first of all, this morning, these flowers are in honor of Ellie and Bernie Barquist, their 47th wedding anniversary tomorrow. <laughs> can you guys stand up so they can see you? Say hello to Bernie and <laughs> Ellie. God bless you guys. All right, wonderful. A lot of things in your uh, bulletin here today just to, for you to take a look at. But uh, one of the things I want to mention to you is that coming up on the 13th, which is uh, about two weeks away, in the evening we'll have Jim Martinez, the Jim Martinez Trio with us. 
Uh, lots of you remember Jim, and he plays a lot with our, our Jim over here. And uh, we did it at Christmas time. They're going to be a marvelous concert here for you. It's going to be fun, and that'll be four in the afternoon. So you want to make sure, just be part of that. In a few weeks on the 20th, We'll be having another membership class, another welcome class. So if you've been coming here and you would like to know more about us and uh, want a free lunch, then plan on coming to that. And we'll keep announcing that and we'll be sending some letters out to you, but we'd love to have you. And so if you would like to come, just write it on that little yellow slip. Welcome class. Make sure you put your name on so I know that was you and just put it in the offering and we'll make sure we have a place for you. Um, other things that are going to be going on, but most important next week is our, what we call our Celebration Sunday. It's uh, once a year we have an annual business meeting, and I hate business meetings, so I try to turn it into a celebration, and uh, we will constitute it as our business meeting, but uh, there will be a lot of people sharing uh, what God has been doing in their life, uh, what this church has meant to them. It's going to be a very special morning. And uh, we hope you'll be with us next week. At that time, we will be voting on, on our uh, new elders, affirming them, and also on the constitutional bylaws change, as we've been telling you about, and they're available to you out there in the lobby. Each week, I've tried to introduce you to one of the gentlemen that are being put forth for you to be an elder. And this week is our third one. And Bill Lewis, if you'd come on up here. Um, I think Bill must have thought he was going to preach today because he's dressed to the hilt. <laughs> wow, my, oh my. Hey, my friend, it's good to have you here. And let's, let me make sure this thing is working. Do we have a tech in the house? Well, yeah, there we go. Now, is that working? No. no. Now it is. <laughs> it's yours, my friend. Okay. Well, Bill... You've been coming here now for a couple of years. Yes, we uh, came here for uh, in 2019, and then of course the pandemic hit, and so we attended at home for a while. And then the pandemic hit, so you were stuck with us. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, um, and of course your wife Lynn went home to be with the Lord in this last year. Yeah. It's been a um, it's been a year of change, and it's been a year of. Uh, readjustment and uh, I want to thank all of this congregation for your prayers for me and for my bride and I thank you for the support that you have given us through this year. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Now Bill you're from Southern California. You worked with the, uh, the water and power department down there for a good number of years before yes. you came up here. And uh, I don't have time to let him share your, his whole testimony. I wanted to do some of that time with that with you. But it was truly an amazing thing that God did in his life. There was a tragedy there with your work group. Yes. And God used that to draw you closer to him, didn't he? He did. Because at that time, uh, Lynn and I were really not walking with the Lord. Uh, we walk on Sunday, but that was it. And... Uh, through this tragedy and through a good friend that uh, is, I played golf with, he, uh, he helped me to realize that I needed God, Jesus Christ, in my life 24-7. Amen. And uh, from that point that both of us uh, really began to accept the Lord and... Uh, when Pastor Jody asked me how old I was when I met the Lord, and I told him, I said, I've known, known about him all my life, but I met him when I was about 50. Sure. Well, and that's about 30 years ago now this all took place. Yeah. Okay. Now, you've been very involved in the Veterans Affairs, kind of running the veterans group here. Uh, yes. I, for a number of years, I was the program chair and uh, uh, the event coordinator and put together the uh, Memorial Day and Veterans Day uh, celebrations. <clears throat> well, I, I know, go ahead. I, I dodged being president until this year. <laughs> well, I know whenever you have put that on, there's been a, a decided 
spiritual flavor to it too, because I know you had me come and yes, I did. And, uh, when I found out that our um, new pastor here was a veteran, I came over and uh, corralled him to uh, give the invocation of Memorial Day. Bless your heart. Well, I, that was a privilege for me to do it. Bill, I want to thank you for giving us a few minutes this morning. And your whole family's down here today. I sure. is. Yes, <laughs> my two sons, my daughter-in-law, Lisa, my granddaughter, Christiana, my friend, Diane. Good to have you all here today. Well, thank you, Bill. God bless you. Well, as we pray this morning, uh, I want us to take some time and just thank God for the these men that are being put forward to you and uh, for their lives. Um, especially this morning, however, I want you to remember the family of Joanne Logan. A lot of you probably saw the email. Joanne is a member here, and she lived down at the Pines, but it was here most every Sunday. She just always a smile on her face, but at 89, the Lord called her home last Thursday. It was very sudden, and uh, her husband had passed away a year before, so now they're both in the presence of the Lord, and we rejoice just to remember the family in prayer. Grace Spear has asked us to pray for her daughter, Denise, Thursday this week. She will be having breast cancer over in Fremont Kaiser Hospital, so we want to remember her. And uh, especially, I want you to join me this morning in praying for this Ukraine crisis. That's, uh, that weighs on everybody's heart. Um, there's a large Ukrainian community living here in Sacramento, so you know that they're worried. And uh, we should all be concerned because this, this has impact on the whole world. So join me this morning as we pray, and let's pray for the peace of God in that situation. Father, this morning as we come in this place, we remember the words of Vakuk. The Lord is in his holy temple, let all the earth keep silent. We think of the psalmist's words, be silent and know that he is God. Lord, in these moments, even when we don't know how to pray, the Holy Spirit makes intercession for us in words that cannot be even expressed. And so as we come today, Lord, our, our words are feeble. But we know you hear and you know our hearts. Lord, we pray this morning for Grace Spears' daughter, Denise, and that that surgery will go well on Thursday and that you would give great comfort to Grace and to Steve. We pray for the family of Joanne Logan, Lord. They know she's in your presence. And I know there is comfort in that. But Lord, nevertheless, you've made us human and we do feel grief. And so in these moments, you, the Father of all mercies and the God of all comfort, comfort them. And we especially pray today, Lord, for the Ukrainian crisis. Lord, There are people who are anguishing and also perishing. Lord, we ask that you put your hand on that situation and bring peace. In whatever way it has to happen, Lord, we pray that it not be allowed to continue. Father, we live in a very sinful and very evil and very violent world. We ask you to help us to be peacemakers, to make us the kind of people who do not participate in that kind of behavior. Oh, Lord, we realize right now that's a, there's a battle going on there, Lord, but, but we are also so easily drawn into conflict with others. In the midst of this whole COVID pandemic, sad to say, Father, it has oftentimes brought out the worst in many. Help us, Lord, to, to remember that the meek will inherit the earth. And blessed are the peacemakers. 
Help us to be that kind of a person. Help us to to bring peace wherever we walk. Give us words that comfort. Give us a heart of mercy. For we are called to be like you. And now this morning as we pray and we worship, we bring our gifts to you. And we thank you for this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Carol. I got three microphones up here. (laughs) They're going to hear me in Roseville today, aren't they? (laughs) The sermon title today is Sign In, Please. We will be in the Gospel of Luke in chapter 10. Luke chapter 10, verse 19 and 20, Jesus says, Behold, I have given you authority to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall injure you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rejoice that your names are recorded in heaven When I read the Bible, I see certain things. I look for particular things. And one of those things that I look for are singulars and plurals. Look at that last sentence when Jesus says, your names. Jesus was speaking to his disciples, and I believe that the Holy Spirit could be very to be saying the very same thing to everyone in the sanctuary this morning. Rejoice. Your names 
are recorded in heaven. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you love us and call us your children. We thank you for the blessings that we've seen today and the hope that we have for tomorrow. We would invite your Holy Spirit to fill this sanctuary today, touch our hearts and our minds. Heavenly Father, use the preacher if you have to, but Lord, we invite the Spirit to lead us. And we would be so bold as to tell you, thank you in advance, for we ask this in Jesus' most precious and most perfect name. Amen. Amen. Years ago, there was a game show called I've Got a Secret. And the host would invite the guests to come in and sign in, please. And the guest would sign their name on the uh, chalkboard. It was the signature that identified who the guest was. You know, there is value in our signatures. There's value in our written names. The original Declaration of Independence was signed by 56 men. They all put their name on the dotted line. It was Benjamin Franklin who said, we, had, we will hang separately unless we sign, we might hang together. These brave men decided their fate of a new country. They decided their own fate by the power of their signature. It is our signature in our name that is one of the most powerful, most unique things among humans. It separates us from all of mankind. Our, our signature, it's more than a group of letters. It's more than just a label. Our signature of our name is our history and our future all rolled up into one. You see, our signature tells us where we've been. And our name tells us where we are going. In the Gospel of Luke, chapter 10, Jesus had sent out 72 disciples, and now they had returned after a short-term missionary project. They were preaching the gospel. They were healing the people. They were casting out demons in city after city after city. And when they returned... These 72 disciples, they were excited. They were happy to tell Jesus all the things that they had accomplished in his name. And the 72 returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. And Jesus said to them, I watched Satan fall from heaven like lightning. It was an exciting surprise to these men about all the things that they had accomplished in the name of Jesus. And Jesus himself acknowledged that Satan had lost some of his power. These men realized that the Spirit of God had given them power to accomplish the purposes of heaven. And Jesus' response? Well, it was encouraging to these men Luke 10, 19, Jesus says, Behold, I have given you authority to tread upon serpents and scorpions. I have given you authority over all the power of the enemy, and nothing, nothing shall injure you. Now, I don't know about you, but I would kind of like that ability, don't you think? be able to step on a snake or a scorpion with the assurance that nothing, nothing is going to injure me? I mean, wouldn't that be something to be enthusiastic about? Kind of like being Superman, don't you think? <laughs> nothing can injure you. And I don't know about you, but I think I'd look pretty good in a cape. <laughs> but yeah, I would be excited about the fact that nothing can injure me. And while I'm sure the disciples had the very same idea, they were happy to have that kind of power. And remember, the disciples came back to Jesus with joy. There was enthusiasm. There was excitement. There was joy. And this is not the kind of joy you get when you get a pair of socks for Christmas. <laughs> this was real joy. Look what we've been able to do for the kingdom because of the power of God in our lives. There was excitement 
enthusiasm about this power from above, about the power over Satan and scorpions and snakes. But look at what Jesus says in the very next verse. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rejoice that your names are recorded in heaven. My Bible tells me that Jesus was fully human, and there were some things in this world to be excited about. There are some things in this world to be joyful about, and Jesus says having power and authority over reptiles, that's not one of them. Having power over Satan was not something to be excited about. Ah, oh, but if you wanted to rejoice about something, Jesus said, rejoice in the fact that your names are written in heaven. The same is true for us today. There are a hundred things to be happy about in this world. Flowers in your garden. There are people who are happy popping bubble wrap. <laughs> Amen, Tricia? <laughs> there are... There is happiness about taking a nap or, or when a stranger smiles at you. Don't you find happiness in that? You see, in this world, there are plenty of things to be happy about. And I think there's things to be excited and enthusiastic about seeing an old friend, going shopping, birthdays, or getting a hug that lasts an extra Three seconds. That adds so much to our lives. And these are things to be excited about. But the most important, the one thing that was paramount to Jesus to rejoice what is the facts that our names, our names are recorded in heaven. According to Jesus, if you're going to have joy about anything, have joy that your signature is found in the Lamb's book of life. Revelation 3, 5, Jesus said, The one who overcomes will be clothed in white garments, and I will not erase his name from the book of life, and I will confess his name before my Father and before his angels. The gospel of Jesus Christ is simply this. God created everything that we see and taste and touch and hear and smell. God created the sun and the moon and the stars, and God looks at the majesty of the heavens, and then he looks at this congregation, and he says, you're my best thing. You see, God loves you. But there's this thing in this world called sin. James tells us what sin is. If you know the right thing to do and you don't do it, to him it is sin. Guess what? Romans 3 tells us for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. I don't know what you mean when you say all, but when God says all, he means all have sinned. And Isaiah 59.2 tells us that it is our sin that separates us from God. God has not walked away from us, but we in our sin have walked away from him. But here's the paradox of God's love for us. He lives us. He loves us despite our sin. He loves us so much that he sent Jesus Christ to take all of our sin and place it on his cross. And when we believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, the Savior, the promised Messiah from the Old Testament, when we believe that he died for the sins of this world, that he was buried, when we believed Acts 13.30, when God raised him from the dead, do you understand that Jesus did not raise himself from the dead because he was dead? To conquer death, Jesus only had to die, and God raised him from the dead. And when we believe that only God can do the impossible, that only God would do that for us, 
we remember Romans 10, 13, he who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If we have called upon the name of the Lord, our name is written in the Lamb's book of life, never to be taken away, never to be blotted out, never to be erased. If your name is written in the book of life, it will remain there forever and ever and ever. Jesus says that's something to rejoice about. Amen? Amen. Say it like you mean it. Amen. But what if? What if our name is not written in the book of life? What would it be like to stand before God Almighty in awe of his reverence and humbled by his majesty and for a moment wondering to yourself, is my name on that list, is my name in the book of life? And Jesus will look in the book of life and he'll say to you, this is your name. You're with us. Come and join your team. What rejoicing there will be. What relief, what happiness, what excitement we will have. You see, the hope of our faith will no longer be hope. It will be reality as Jesus confesses our name before the Father. As Jesus confesses our name before the angels in heaven. Is that something to rejoice about? Is that something to rejoice about? Yes, yes. Jesus looks at us and he finds our name. Then he turns the book around to the Father. And he shows the angels in heaven so that they can see our signature. The followers of Jesus were excited about the fact that demons were subject to their names. And Jesus said, boys, that ain't nothing. The disciples had lived in fear of stepping on snakes and scorpions. They were happy that they could not be injured. And Jesus said, if you're going to rejoice about anything, celebrate the fact that your names are written in the book of life. It was, if it was true for the disciples, it is true for us in this congregation. Amen? Amen. And there are only two ways to react when you find if your name is written in the book of life or it is not, and the first reaction is to celebrate. And the second reaction, it is not happy. Jesus said in Revelation, and if anyone's name was not found written in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire now, I know that as a Christian church, we always want to paint a happy picture about seeing Jesus, but I would rather read my Bible and tell the truth rather than put somebody in danger of not finding a place in the kingdom of heaven. The second way to react after Jesus, after finding out if your name is in the book of life or not, is total and complete despair. Do you realize the Bible talks about a bottomless pit? Being separated from God is not the same distance forever. It is a continuing, ongoing, increasing distance away from God forever and ever. It is despair, it is misery and desolation that does not end. We all know that there's a difference between laughing and crying. We all know that there's a difference between burying a family member or seeing the birth of a new child. We see those differences in stark contrast. It is the difference between knowing that your name is written in the book of life and realizing that it had never been written down. 1 John 5, 11, 12, and 13, and the testimony is this, that God has given us eternal life and this life is in his Son, he who has the Son has the life, but he who does not have the Son of God does not have the life. These things I have written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you may know, so that you may know that you have eternal life. 
I might not know a lot. But I know three things. I know that my wife loves me. And I know that tomorrow morning the sun will come up. And I know that my name is written in the Lamb's book of life. The Lord has had my signature since the fifth grade. Jesus is the guardian of my soul, and I have a place at the master's table forever and ever because my name is written in the Lamb's book of life. So let me ask you, is your name in the book of life? And if you're not sure, let me say, Sign in, please. 2 Corinthians 6.2 Today is the day of salvation. Do you realize that our eternal life does not begin the day we die? Our eternal life begins the day we call Jesus Lord. And man, we, start, we need to start living every day like we believe it. Because we should be making love, making proof of God's love and his mercy rather than his judgment and the power of his wrath. So what's the preacher saying today? I'm saying that it is our signature, our name that is unique. You see, our name not only tells of the past, it tells of our future. And I would like everyone here to understand what Jesus wanted his disciples to know, that there are many, many things in this world to rejoice about, but nothing. Nothing is more important than making sure that your name is written in the book of life. And I'm here to remind you that there are only two ways to react after finding out if your name is in the book of life or not. And if you've never made that decision, that conscious decision to ask Jesus into your life, if you are not sure that your name is written in the Lamb's book of life, you find Pastor Mike. You find me. You find one of the elders. And today, today you can know that your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. You see, today we have the opportunity to sign in, please. God be praised.
Dear Father in heaven, we come before you at this time to say thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to get together and hear your word. And Lord, we ask you to help us to take it into our hearts and reach out to others and spread this word. We thank you for this church. We ask you to continue to be with our pastors, guide them, keep them focused on you, Lord, and protect them because they are under attack always. Lord, and we pray for the congregation that we would all stay well. We thank you for the many blessings that you give us. These things we ask, in the name of thy Son, amen.